My name is Braylon Lacey, and I love J. Ross T. What's up, y'all? This your boy J. Ross hanging out with my cat Braylon. Man, we in St. Louis. He just got through finishing up here with Erica Badu. And when I tell you they put it down, they put it down, Pete. That bass, man, you had that bass walking the water, man. Dude, like uh, the skills that you use, man, how did you develop them so that you can play, you know, just the way you play, man? Well, uh, a lot of practice, man. I know it sounds just really basic, but a lot of practice, a lot of studying records, listening to records, and checking out a lot of the old, old school cats. Like yeah. James Jamerson, Chuck Rainey, Bootsy Collins, uh, Joel Smith. Oh, yeah. Uh, a lot of these cats aren't around anymore, but they still around on records, uh -huh. so you got to go check it out. So, so you recommend, all right, go back and check out an archive. Is it, do you go cross genres or how did you do it? You know, so you get folks an idea. Definitely cross genres uh, because you have to uh, be able to be versatile and suit the style of the song. Someone like Erica, she may, she may draw from hip hop, she may draw from soul, she may draw from rock. So you have to be able to bring that authentic approach to each yeah. song. Yeah. Now, I've also seen you a few times uh, hitting with uh, Kurt Whaler right. here in St. Louis. You come with a whole different vibe. Mm -hmm. You know, is that is that the same thing? You just learn and then you're able to switch up your musical library in your head? It's the same thing. It's the exact same thing. For that, you know, you're drawing more from a jazz influence. You may be drawing from Marcus Miller. Uh, for cats like that. Yeah. So he's one of the main cats in that genre that you would check out yeah. and listen to. But B, how did you how did you go about incorporating it, incorporating it into your own style so you don't sound like Marcus Miller or Victor or Jocko or whoever? I think the thing is just to always try to be authentic to you, and it can be a diff <coughs> difficult thing to try and not be a clone, but try your best to maybe learn some theory, maybe learn some practical things. Yeah. Wouldn't hurt to learn, learn a little harmony, maybe some keyboard, and try to understand how these guys are going about doing what they're doing. And then you'll be able to create your own sound. Yeah, well I noticed uh, Erica walk to, over to you and whisper something in your ear, next thing you know, you come out with a solo. So like, <laughs> so like when you soloing, uh, is it already prepared in your head? Do you just feel the, the band, or how, how do you approach that? Um, it's in the moment, so it's, it's totally spontaneous. I don't know what I'm about to play, but I do just try to feel the band, feel feel the music where we're at, and what we're creating together, and I just go off of that. Yeah. So what kind of energy come over come over that? Like y'all on stage, you got everybody screaming, man. So what kind of energy going through you, man? Uh, it's a great feeling, man, when you can give the audience what they came looking for and then they give it back so it's just a, it's like a give and take it's, yeah yeah so when you up there rolling band rolling you're feeling good yeah. you're thinking about bills you're thinking about your wife you're thinking about you know i got to take the trash out right. oh, okay. what's, right. go, what's going through all sorts of things mainly uh erica in the case with erica she's a very organic very live type of performer and it's in the style of like a a James Brown, so yeah. to speak. I know she's the female, right? But she's a real. You got to pay attention and watch the cues. And she may go, she may change, make a left turn. You got to be right with her, stay on her. She call you out on stage. Yeah, I noticed so. that too, man. She, she, she just switching stuff, That's start, right. stop. That's you know, right. she y'all groove, and she said, "No, nah, let Braylon play something." That's right. You know, she let let RC play something. So that's the that's that's the old school approach, and you got to listen to records. You know, you got to because she may say, "Play this." From a, a record way back. You oh, straight be, up? Yeah, you got to be ready. Oh, my goodness, man. <laughs> so, like, all right, once she call them out, you, you ever got caught where you just, yeah. oh, man. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Oh, and she'll hold her hand up, like, how precious do it's $5. <laughs> <laughs> but she's very gracious, though. She's very, it's all, it's all in fun. Right. Man. She's a wonderful artist, so. Yeah. Hey, so, B, when you was growing up, man, uh, what made you just pick up the bass? You know, what made you go bass? Man, I have to be honest. I, I was actually, I grew up playing in church, just like probably everybody percent of it. Yeah. And so uh, my father is a, a bass player and my brother played also, but I just started gravitating toward it. I, it started kind of standing out in my ears on records and songs. Yeah. And uh, funny thing is one night, <laughs> I asked my father, I said, Dad, I was about 11. I said, will you show me how to play the bass? 
And he said, you already know how to play the bass. I think he thought I was my brother. He was half sleeping. <laughs> and so I just took that as gold. I was like, I guess I do know how to play and just started playing. Man. <laughs> so parents was very supportive? Yeah, they were very supportive. What about going up, going, growing through high school and all that in the jazz band? Right, and... right. I played in jazz band, went and studied at college. Um, and so I did all that. I went to a magnet school in Dallas, the Performing Arts High School. So that's where I cut my teeth on a lot of right. like uh, playing bebop and playing through changes and arranging and different things like that. Also how I sort of made my connection with Erica. She also went to the same high school at different times mm -hmm. but the performing arts high school in Dallas. Well, what about your friends man? They, come on man let's play some basketball let's play football and you in the house. Now I love basketball. Yeah. I did play I, I, I didn't play on the team because the performing arts we didn't have sports in my team yeah. at my school but um, I love basketball, I still do, but once I started rolling my ankles and spraining my fingers, jamming <laughs> my fingers, I said, ah, I'm not gonna be able to do this anymore. So is it like growing up, is it anything in particular you practice on to get your dexterity? Yeah, definitely. What can, what can cats do, man? A lot of scales, you gotta practice your scales, practice your modes, practice triads and all your seventh chord arpeggios. Just about everything tech, if you wanna master technical, facility, you got to practice technical things. Mm -hmm. So I guess the, the thing I would say is what you want to what you want to do, you have to practice doing that. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be hard at first and it may not sound too good, but persistence is the key. Yeah. Now you can play any bass you want. Now why you choose that move? So I choose that one, man, because I'm really at my heart. I'm a, a vintage Fender cat. Uh, I have a 71 P bass and I have a 74 jazz bass. But this is the closest that I can get to those yeah. without taking them out on the road. So, uh, uh, Mulan does a great job. Shout out yes, to Young June and Andy Roseland for hooking me up. But uh, yeah, they make great products. Please go check them out. Now, in your travels, have you ever messed, have they ever messed up a base? That's what made you say yes. you got to leave your good stuff at the crib? Yes, they have. Yeah. They've, they've actually <laughs> flying overseas, <laughs> unfortunately, and they were in hard cases. I had, but I've had to do repairs. I guess it just it goes along with the territory of being a touring musician. Yeah. But, well, yes. la last question. Okay. Being a professional, man, wow. what do, does that entail in a band, you know, big as yours, man, big as your, uh, Erica's? Mm. How do you be a professional, man? Is it being on time? Is it, what? I don't know, what is it? Well, definitely. Oh, shit, there is things to know. Being a, <laughs> the guy's coming in now. So being a professional, you must be on time. You must stay on top of your details. Uh, have a good attitude. Uh, learn the songs. Sometimes cats show up and don't learn the songs. But you know, I think the biggest thing is if you're not at a, if you're not at a large level yet, practice at the small level or whatever you're at like you're on the big level right and then that big level will come eventually you know yeah but tell folks how they can find you man on facebook they want to holler at you and pick your brain man come check me out instagram braylon lacy uh check me out on twitter braylon jl at twitter braylon lacy on facebook all right, y'all, this is your boy J. Ross hanging on my, my boy B. We in St. Louis. Want to give him a shout out for hooking me up, man, putting me in the game for the Earth of Badu concert, man, and pooping him up from the airport, man, and you know, just, just had a ball, man. So shout out to B, man. We're going to let him roll. This is your boy J. Ross. We 10 million strong, and we gone. Peace. Uh,